In the last lecture, we had talked about the implementation of quantum Fourier transform. We discussed in detail what happens to 1, 2 and 3 qubit cases and then pointed out in principle one could extend it to n qubits. These were components that we required for implementing what is known as source factorization algorithm. But before I go to source factorization algorithm, let me point out a few things regarding the factorization and its status with respect to classical algorithm. So, I am going to be concentrating on a situation in which I have a number n which is product of two large primes. Uh, of course, in this lecture for the purpose of illustration, I will not be able to take p and q very large. Uh, I will necessarily take small values, but that is only to illustrate the principle. The power of quantum computation lies in the fact that the algorithm that I will be discussing is applicable for large p and q. Now, there are in principle uh, algorithms which can compute the factors of a large composite number or of a composite number. Uh, one of the uh, algorithms is the Euclid algorithm. Uh, basically, uh, it takes about square root of n steps and you can see why. Because if you are given a number of which there is a factor, that factor has to remain less than square root of n. One factor below square root of n and the other factor above square root of n is the simplest way of understanding. The There are many other algorithms. Euclid is not particularly suitable for uh, large numbers. So, there are better algorithms, much faster algorithms. But if you look at the fastest algorithm that is there, you find that it takes this ex complicated expression that I have given on the slide exponential of logarithm n to the power one third log log n to the power two thirds. Not important how it came, but this is still very slow. The point to realize is that multiplication is a fast program. So, just to give you an idea that supposing I ask you find the factors of a number like 29083. You can use Euclid or any other algorithm that you want and you will take about a couple of hours if you are uh, using some of these things. Using pen and pencil at least you will take couple of hours. However, if I tell you that this number is essentially 229 into 127 back checking it, checking is easy. Factorization is hard. So, before I uh, bring in source algorithm, let me tell you how this Euclid algorithm works. So, basically what we do in case of a Euclid algorithm is the following. Suppose I have two numbers A and B and I am supposed to find the greatest common divisor of A and B and let it be equal to some number C. By definition then C divides both A and B. So, let A be written as M C and B be written as N C where M and N are integers. Now, notice one thing that suppose I divide A by B. Now, if I divide A by B unless B happens to be a factor of A a long division will leave a remainder. So, 
let me say that this remainder is a minus b q b is smaller one of the two. So, b less than a. Now, one can easily show that c divides r this is the remainder. The reason is very simple. See you can write this as m c minus n q multiplied this. So, c divides r. So, what is done in Euclid algorithm is the following. You start with a long division of a by b. Let it be equal to q1 and let there be a remainder which is a minus bq1. Let me just simply take the following. Supposing I have a number which let us say is uh, 75 and uh, let me say b equal to 24. So, what I have done actually is this, this of course will complete in essentially one or two steps. So, this is my q, so that is 72 and I am left with 3 as the remainder. At that stage what I do is, I divide b by your remainder of the first part, this was my remainder and this will have a remainder which is b minus q2 r1. So, in other words what I do is this division is now carried as this remainder as the divisor and the previous divisor as the dividend. So, it is 3 8 is 24 and you carry on this task till situation of this type. This is r1 by uh, r2 etcetera etcetera you go you have an r3 there which I will not write down and finally, you say q n plus 1 equal to r n minus 1 by r n and let us suppose this completes the division that is there are no remainders left and so then my r n becomes equal to c and this is the way Euclid's algorithm works. It is a decent algorithm to uh, work with reasonably small numbers, but is no good if you take up very, very large numbers. So, let us look at how do we handle uh, the situation here. So, I gave you that 29803 as an example, which is what is listed in this thing. In order to use this algorithm, Shore suggested that you solve an equivalent problem and this equivalent problem is called period finding. You might recollect that we had mentioned about finding periods and its connection with the Fourier transform. So, what we will do is this, the first step in source algorithm is given an n, choose a random number m which is less than n, which is co prime with n. Let me explain what is meant by that. numbers are said to be co-primes if they have no common factor among themselves and you are simply choosing a random number and it is very easy using uh, Euclid type of algorithm to find out whether uh, the m that you have chosen is a factor of n or not. 
So, if there is if they have a common factor that is that is fairly easy because it is a matter of checking. Now, what you do is this that corresponding to this m we will try to find out the various powers of m. Let me define a function uh, with reference to the slide. So, I define a function f n of a this is that m raised to the power a m is that random number that I chose which was co prime with n modulus n. These are all discrete mathematics. So, you uh, we are talking about modular uh, exponential. Now, the smallest p the smallest value of a let us call it t for which m to the power p is equal to 1 mod m. This is called period of this function that I have defined. I will just give you numerical example of how it works. Let me take a very simple number. As I said, many of my illustrations will be uh, trivial illustrations, but that helps in establishing the uh, principle that I am talking about. So, we will do, let me take n is equal to 21. If you take n is equal to 21, of course, you will say that I know it is 3 into 7, but then I am not going to be using a quantum computer to uh, find out uh, the factors of 21, 55, etcetera, but this is to illustrate it. Now, let me choose a random m as I said, but let me choose m is equal to 2. How do I go ahead and find the period? So, I find various powers of 2. So, I get 2, 2 square which is equal to 4, 2 cube which is 8, 2 to the power 4 is 16, 2 to the power 5 is already exceeded 21, 32, but that is equal to 11 mod 21. 2 to the power 6 is 64, which is 1 mod 21, because 64 is 63 plus 1. So, therefore, this defines my period. So, choosing m is equal to 2 for capital N is equal to 21, I find the period p to be equal to 6. Notice one thing, any of these numbers, for example, I have chosen 2, m could belong to any one of these sets. I could choose 4, 5, 6 I cannot because it has a common factor. Uh, 7 I cannot because 7 into 3 is 21, 8, 10, 11, uh, 13, 16, 17, 19 and 20. You could choose any one of these and calculate the powers. Now, what is the relationship of this power calculation? with factorizing. Now, in order to do that, I will need some elementary result from discrete algebra. I will not be proving all of them, but uh, the proofs are available in any standard textbook, but I will be sort of illustrating them. Now, consider a quadratic equation 
for instance x square is equal to 1 mod m now if n is a prime i should more appropriately say if n is an odd prime then one can show that this equation has only trivial solutions that is x is equal to plus or minus 1. On the other hand, if n happens to be a composite number, then in addition to the trivial solutions, there are also non-trivial solutions of the problem. Pair of non-trivial solutions, for instance, x could be some plus or minus a. Remember, these are modular arithmetic. So, when I say something is plus or minus a, it means it is that quantity plus k times number n. To illustrate what I mean by this statement, let us consider the following. Consider the solution of x square equal to 1 mod 41. This equation only has trivial solution and the reason is that 41 is a prime number or prime number. But on the other hand, consider 55, let n be equal to 55. Then I claim that because 55 is a composite number, the equation x square equal to 1 mod 55 has in addition to the trivial solution has a pair of non-trivial solutions. And these you can easily calculate because uh, I claim that x equal to plus or minus 21 are solutions. Now, you can see why because if x equal to plus or minus 21, x square is equal to 441, 21 square is that, which is equal to 1 mod 440. Recall 440 is 8 times 55. So, therefore, this is also equal to 1 mod 55. What is the connection of this theorem with whatever we are doing? So, we said we have chosen m to the power p equal to 1. So, that tells me that if I choose x is equal to p by 2, sorry, x equal to m to the power p by 2, then this equation gets converted to an x square equal to 1 equation, mod n of course. Now, obviously, in order that I can do that, my p has to be even. So, one of the requirements of source algorithm is p better be even. If p is odd, the algorithm fails. And what do you do in that case? Just go back, choose a different m and carry on again until you are successful. Now, if p is even, I write this equation as m to the power p by 2 plus 1, I just factorize it. m to the power p by 2 plus 1 into m to the power p by 2 minus 1 is equal to 0 mod m. The uh, now this this into this is equal to zero mod n. Now remember that this is discrete mathematics. So when something is zero mod n, it doesn't mean it is equal to zero per se. It simply means it is zero plus some k times n. 
but you see this cannot be 0 mod n that is because of our definition of the period we said period p is the smallest integer for which m to the power p is equal to 1 mod n. So, therefore, I cannot have p by 2 also satisfying this equation. So, this is not possible. Now, the other possibility is m to the power p by 2 plus 1 is 0 mod n, which means m to the power p by 2 plus 1 is some k times n. Now, if that happens also, the algorithm fails. So, let me write it down. If this happens, algorithm fails. However, if m to the power p by 2 plus 1 is not equal to 0 mod n, then I can proceed with uh, whatever we are doing and it has been shown that the probability of these two things that are happening. What are the two things? One is that the period for a random number being even and second one is that once it is even m to the power p by 2 plus 1 being not equal to 0 mod m has reasonably high probability for product of two prime number this can be shown to be greater than half, but I will not go through the probability calculations. But suppose these two things are satisfied, then how can I satisfy this equation? The only way I can satisfy this equation is that this and this contain factors of n. So, this is where the situation lies that is if this then will contain factors of n. slide shows the summary. Now, it is this order finding part that needs to be done by a quantum computer and the reason is that if your n is large, then all powers of m will have to be calculated and that becomes a daunting stuff, daunting task in a classical computer. But in the quantum computer you realize all powers of m will be simultaneously calculated. But you have always pointed out that there is a challenge because you have to extract that value of p which is relevant to our problem with a high degree of probability because there are large number of such calculations there. So, this is the summary of what we have talked about so far. Now, let me sort of illustrate that how this works. So, let me go back to couple of examples. Take for example, a simple number n is equal to 21. We have seen that I know that the uh, if I choose m is equal to 2, p turns out to be equal to 6. My factorization then told me that I must have m by 2 plus 1 into m by 2 minus 1 sorry m to the power p by 2 minus 1 that must be equal to 0 mod n. And what are these number? This is 2 to the power 3 because 6 by 2 plus 1 into 2 cube minus 1 and we claim that these then contain the factors that we are talking about. You can see that this is nothing but 9 which contains the factor 3 and this is just 7 which is one of the factors of this. As a further example, let us take n is equal to 35 and let me take a little more uh, different number, little different number. Let m be equal to 13 which is co prime to 35 because 13 and 35 have no common factor. Now, check 
13 square is 169. 13 cube I do not need to calculate because if it were 1 mod uh, 35, then of course my algorithm will fail. In this case, it does not. 13 to the power 4, you can take a calculator and show that it is equal to 28561, which is nothing but 35 into 816, a trivial calculation is what I require. So, therefore, my p is equal to 4 in this case. So, what do I have? I since p is equal to 4, I get 13 square plus 1 into 13 square minus 1. That contains the factors of 35 and you can check since 13 square is 169, this is 170 and this is 168. This obviously has a factor 5. And this number can be checked to be divisible by 7. Now, that explains how this is carried out. Now, what I have to do now is this to get these into implementation. So, let us quickly summarize what we have done today. We have given an algorithm, which is actually the most important part of the algorithm, which has to be done in a quantum computer. And this requires calculation of a period of a discrete function. We defined a discrete function, which is raising the power of a random number which is co prime to the given n for which you want to find out the factors and this random number raised to certain power should be equal to 1. So, this step requires calculation of various powers of this random number and that part can be done very efficiently by a quantum computer. If this period of the function, which is the minimum value of the power for which m to the power p is equal to 1 mod n, then by a theorem of discrete algebra, we find that it has non-trivial solution when my capital N is a composite number. And then we factorized this m to the power p equal to 1 or rather m to the power p minus 1 equal to 0 into m to the power p by 2 plus 1 into m to the power p by 2 minus 1 and we showed that each one of these now contains a factor of the original number. What we are going to do next is to uh, find out or is to decide uh, discuss how does a computer uh, quantum computer actually implement.